Welcome dear math leads to the next edition of quadratic equation. In this video, we'll be analyzing the nature of roots of a quadratic equation. Basically, it is the discriminant of the equation which unveils the dual nature of car and quadratic roots. They can either be real or complex. Now let us try to understand what is the discriminant and how does it enable us to analyze the dual nature and discriminates between real and complex roots. Now, if we take the standard format of a quadratic equation, ax square plus bx plus c is equal to zero, and alpha and beta are the roots, then alpha is defined by minus b plus root d by 2a, and beta is defined by minus b minus root d by 2a, where provided d is equal to b squared minus 4ac, which is greater than or equal to zero. Now let us understand what is this d, and how does it make it great, uh, how does it analyze the nature of the roots? Now, if we take the solutions of the equation ax square plus bx plus c or the roots of the equation, they, are, they can be defined together as minus b plus minus under root b square minus 4ac by 2a. Now, these two terms inside the radical sign, b square minus 4ac, that this is equal to b, the discriminant of the equation, d is equal to these, uh, b square minus 4ac. Now what happens is inside the radical sign if b squared minus 4ac or d is greater than or equal to 0 then we will always get real roots and this can be further subcategorized and if d is less than 0 in that case we will get complex roots. So now let us take d is greater than 0 and uh, equal to 0 and analyze this or segregate this further. Here if d is greater than 0 we will always, always get real roots as well as two distinct roots. The roots will be distinct. Two unequal roots. If d is equal to 0, then the roots will be real as well as equal. So, these two are the main subcategories over here. And of course, if d is greater than or equal to 0 simultaneously, then we will get real roots. And if d is less than 0, that is inside the radical sign, if we get a not negative quantity, then in that case, the roots, for example, supposing we get minus 3 under root or minus 5 under root. In that case, these terms are not real numbers, they are complex numbers, so we'll get your complex roots. In this video, we'll be focusing only on real roots. Now, let's take some questions to understand the nature of the roots of a quadratic equation. Basically, when we get questions like this to determine the nature of roots, we need not solve the entire equation, only the value of d which is b squared minus 4ac, that is the discriminant, will help us analyze the nature of roots. Now here a is 2, b is 1 and c is negative 1. So b squared minus 4ac, this will become equal to 1 minus or 1 whole square which is 1 minus 4 into 2 into negative 1, that is 1 plus 8, that is equal to 9. Now you notice over here that d is greater than 0, so of course we will get two real and distinct roots. In this case, b squared minus 4ac, that is equal to negative 4 the whole square, minus 4 into 1 into 4, that is equal to 16 minus 16, so 16 minus 16 is 0, hence we get here two real and equal roots. Now in this case, a is 1, b is 1, c is 1. So here we get b squared minus 4ac. This is equal to 1 minus or 1 whole square that is 1 minus 4 into 1 into 1 that is equal to 1 minus 4 that is negative 3. So inside the radical sign we get a negative quantity that means we will get here unreal or complex roots. So as I said earlier we will be focusing only on real roots in this video. Now let us try to take another type of question. Determining the values of an unknown in a quadratic equation when the nature of roots is given. So here the nature of the roots is given as real and equal. So the moment we get the nature of roots as real and equal, we can take or equate the discriminant to 0 or we can write b squared minus 4ac is equal to 0 and frame an equation with the help of the values of a, b, c given in the equation. Now here a is 9, b is 3k and c is 4. So b becomes or b squared becomes 3k the whole square 
minus 4 into 9 into 4. This is equal to 0. So this becomes 9k square minus 144 is equal to 0. So this implies 9k square is equal to 144. This implies k square is equal to 144 by 9 and which further implies k is equal to plus minus 12 by 3 or k is equal to plus minus 4. Now both the values of k plus 4 and minus 4 will give us real and equal roots in this equation. If we take the positive value, we get over here 9x square plus 12x plus 4 is equal to 0, which is a perfect square equation and it is the expansion of 3x plus 2 the whole square. If we take the negative value of 4, this becomes 9x square minus 12x plus 4 is equal to 0 and this is an expansion of 3x minus 2 the whole square. So now from this equation, we get the value of both the real root, real and equal roots will be minus 2 by 3 in this and in this it will be plus 2 by 3. In this particular equation, we have here the value of A defined as k plus 1, the value of B as minus 2 into k minus 1 and C is positive 1. So here we have both the coefficients of uh, x square and x defined by the unknown that is k. So here also we proceed in the same manner d is equal to 0 or b square minus 4ac is equal to 0. Now b square will become minus 2 into k minus 1 the whole square minus 4 into k plus 1 into 1 this is equal to 0. So if we simplify this we will get here 4 into k minus 1 the whole square minus 4k minus 4 is equal to 0. This on further simplification will give us 4k square minus 8k plus 4 minus 4k minus 4 is equal to 0. I have expanded this using a minus b the whole square. So now here positive 4 and negative 4 will reduce to 0 and we are left with 4k square minus 12k is equal to 0. So from this equation, we get 4k, if we take out common, we are left with k minus 3 is equal to 0. So equating 4k to 0, we will get k is equal to 0. And equating k minus 3 to 0, we will get k is equal to 3. So both the values 0 and 3, do they justify this equation? Sometimes what happens is when we take k as 0, especially when k is with the x squared term, the x squared term may completely reduce to 0. So in those cases, we cannot take the value of k as 0. But in this particular example, if we take k as 0, then here what happens is uh, the equation becomes x square minus 2 into, uh, this will be negative 1 over here. So this will become positive 2x plus 1 is equal to 0. So this is a perfect square. And if we take the value of 3, of course, we'll get the real and equal roots. The equation will become 4x square. And this will become 3 minus 2, that is 2. And this will, uh, so minus 2 into 2 will give us minus 4, minus 4x plus 1. So this is also a perfect square and we'll get here two real and equal roots. Now here in this question, we have real and distinct roots. So the condition that we need to apply is d is greater than 0 or p square minus 4ac is greater than 0. So b square over here d is 6, 6 whole square minus 4 into k is greater than 0. So this becomes 36 is greater than 4k, which implies k is less than 9. So this means that all values of k which are less than 9 will give us real and distinct roots in this particular equation. So again, we have real and distinct roots. So here again, we'll take d as greater than 0. So here what happens, b is negative 4. So minus 4 the whole square, minus 4 into 1 into k is greater than 0. So this becomes 16 minus 4k is greater than 0, which implies 16 is greater than 4k, or which implies k is less than 4. That means all values of k which are less than 4 will give us real and distinct roots. Now in this question, we are only given real roots. 
that means we have to take the condition d is greater than equal to 0. So here if we take d is greater than equal to 0, b squared minus 4ac is greater than equal to 0. Now b is 3k, a is 9, c is 4. So b squared will become 3k the whole square minus 4 into 9 into 4 is greater than equal to 0. This implies 9k square minus 144 is greater than equal to 0. So this becomes 9k square is greater than equal to 144, which implies k square is greater than equal to 144 by 9, which implies k is greater than equal to plus minus 12 by 3, or k is greater than equal to plus minus 4. Uh, four. That means the value of k uh, can be taken as uh, this can be taken as plus 4 and another value whenever we get real roots another value over here will be k is less than or equal to minus 4 when we solve this, this type of equation. Let's take an example to understand this further or take the theoretical part. Now supposing we get an equation x square minus a square is greater than or equal to 0 where a is a constant that means x square is greater than a square. So x square or x will be greater than or equal to plus minus a. That means x is greater than or equal to plus a and x is less than or equal to negative a. Now on the number line, if we try to represent these values or the solutions for k, this will be, supposing this is positive 4 and on this side this is negative 4. So on the number line, all the values of uh, this uh, positive side that is in, uh, exceeding 4, including 4, this will be uh, like... Um, taken as the values of k which will justify for real roots and all the values of negative 4 and proceeding to lesser than negative 4 will also be justifying the value of k in this equation uh, for real roots but the values lying in between 4 and negative 4 they cannot be included in the solution for k in this particular equation so we have to take the values of k which are less than negative 4 that will give us real and distinct roots Similarly, we will get take the values of 4, including 4, uh, which will give us real and distinct roots. Here we have to include uh, negative 4 also and positive 4 also because the equality sign is also there. So this way these type of equations are solved. Now here in this question, determine the positive values of k for which the equation x squared plus kx plus 64 is 0 and x squared minus 8x plus k is equal to 0 will both have real roots. So both are having real roots and we have to find out that particular value of k for which they simultaneously have real roots. So let us take the discriminant d1 for the first equation uh, that is x squared plus k x plus 64. This will be greater than or equal to 0 and let us take the discriminant d2 which will be greater than or equal to 0 for the second equation. This is the second equation. Now in the first equation, d1 uh, is greater than or equal to 0. That means b squared minus 4ac is greater than or equal to 0. And here also b squared minus 4ac is greater than or equal to 0. So what is b in this first equation? k. So this becomes k squared minus 4 into 64 is greater than or equal to 0, which implies k squared minus 256 is greater than or equal to 0, which implies k square is greater than or equal to 256, which implies k is greater than or equal to plus minus 16. That means k is greater than plus 6 equal to plus 16, and another solution will be k is less than or equal to negative 16. So, uh, but here we are concerned with positive value, so we'll take this uh, positive value into account in this particular question. In this case, b squared minus 4ac will become, so b is over here negative 8, so this will become minus 8 the whole square, minus 4 into 1 into k is greater than or equal to 0. So 64 minus 4k is greater than or equal to 0. So this means 64 is greater than or equal to 4k, or we can say k is less than or equal to 16. So here we get k is less than or equal to 16, and here we get is greater than or equal to positive 60. 
So the value which uh, can be taken for both the equations simultaneously will be k is equal to 16. So this value k is equal to 16 will give us real roots in both the cases simultaneously. Will both have real roots, positive value. This positive value will give us real roots in both the cases. With that, we come to the end of this presentation. Hope you like the explanation. Kindly like, share and subscribe to the channel.